Hello and welcome back and today we're starting our first part of several videos on bench testing the brand new TSH973AX. It's the most affordable ZFS file system NAS that the company QNAP have produced. It takes advantage of QUTS Hero which is their full NAS GUI software user interface and services on this file system with all the benefits of things like triple parity RAID, RAID Z, um, and deduplication and compression all in line. Now, a lot of these things are hard to display on YouTube. In the past, I've tried to display things like SSD caching by showing you guys frequently accessed files or frequently copy and pasted items and showing how compression and things like SSD caching improve performance overall. But the benefits of inline compression and inline deduplication are ever so slightly different. They are more targeted towards space utilization and the benefits in terms of performance come later on. And if anything, you need this harder, more ready system in order to take advantage of inline compression and deduplication and afterwards the benefits are largely felt. So for this video, I'm gonna do a far more bricks and mortar approach to try to show the benefits of this. We're going to show this in quite a straightforward fashion. What we're going to do is utilize this device where we've enabled compression and deduplication on a number of different files and folders here. And we're going to focus on the public folder here. So if we go into this folder, we're able to see that not only is SSD caching, deduplication and compression all enabled, but we can also see just how much space there is. So for example, there are two folders in this um, a particular area of the NAS right now that actually have um, a logical size of 5.56 megabytes, but after the compression has taken place of 3.58. What we're going to do now, uh, while looking at this information here on screen, we're able to break down all of the benefits thus far on this relatively empty folder. So if we go into that folder directly, so if we open it up there and we're looking at the folder in question, we can go into public and see that it's just those two folders. There's nothing in there. It's very, very tiny indeed. And what we're going to do while opening up the other part of file station is we have a USB drive connected to this system. It is uh, quite um, around about 500 megs and it's not completely full. If we go into the properties, we can see inside that there's just under or uh, around 274.43 gigabytes of data covering 17,000 files over 695 folders. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy those files and then we are going to make multiple batches of that file in one directory. We're going to head into the public folder and then from there we're going to tr make numerous copies of this around 274 gigabytes of data in this folder and then let the system do its thing. So what we're going to do is create 10 folders. So we're going to create each folder and just name them uh, nice and simply. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we create all of these folders one by one. And now we've created those 10 folders. What we're going to do is copy that exact 274 gig of data inside all of these folders. And then when the task is completed, we're going to make our way into the storage pool management to see if compression and deduplication have shown benefits. So for now, that's what the marker shows us. If we go to the compression tab, it's given us an idea about what compression is deduplication. And before we go any further, I will highlight that I am well aware of the fact that what we are doing right now is not conventionally how you would utilize inline compression and deduplication. Normally you would be backing up from multiple OSs, maybe you're running multiple VMs from a single system and you don't want to have copies of the same files. Maybe you are accessing the same data being sent to the system day upon day and compression both in both directions allows you to be able to save space. And also you may be using QDedupe, the um, client application 
and uh, s services built into QUTS that allow the, a lot of the compression to take place on the client side. I'm well aware that the tests we're doing today are not indicative of that, but the reason we're running this test is it's the easiest way to show this compression and show the space saving in a far more constructive and brick and mortar way. So let's go ahead and start copying into these directories. We're gonna make sure it uh, does not, um, uh, we're gonna make sure it just carries on and doesn't overwrite anything. So it's just gonna rename, but also these are just going to be the same directories um, on the same pathway. But as we go through, as you can see, they'll all get updated at the top and none of them are going to overwrite. This is going to be that same 274 gig of data in all of these different directories. Now, we are copying from a single external drive, so this is not going to be the quickest procedure. This is going to be a relatively slow affair and one that we are, of course, going to fast forward. But the real interesting thing is going to be what the system does in the background with the benefits of ZFS and QUTS. Nearly done there, and we're into the final one. So now these operations are taking place here in the background. We'll leave all those file processes there. There's all 10 of them with the copying happening, and this is via um, an external drive. It's an external SSD as well, so that shouldn't prove too much of an issue there in the background. And this process is going to take a little bit of time. Now, while it does that, I'm going to leave that there. And the uh, storage manager will start to reflect a lot of these changes. The storage pool certainly has a lot of space available. But we are copying 274 um, gig of data, which unsurprisingly, when we times it by 10, we could have just knocked on a zero at the end, is going to equal around 2.7 terabytes of space so do bear that in mind so if we go into the public folder here we take a closer look with the updated stuff we'll be able to see that utilization is already starting to grow we're already up to 66 gigabytes of space already taken and if we go in and view the data reduction we're going to be able to see that information change because right now we're already gonna to start to see the difference in what we're seeing. But right now it's already re-scanning the pool there with the compression and the space being saved overall. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fast forward to the completion of this copy to see how much data we are saving. We're gonna open up uh, the whole window and that should tell us just how much we're saving. And there's the public and we can already see uh, the after compression differences between them change. That is happening right now, but that difference is going to get larger as time wears on. Let's fast forward to the completion of this exercise. So we've gone forward a little bit now and the task is sitting at just shy of halfway done. Uh, we're looking at 42% all the way through the board across them. And if we have a look so far, we can see by refreshing that tab, I've already just done it, but at the moment, we are up to 1.14 terabytes of storage in that folder. And after compression, we're sitting at 864 gigabytes of space. That's already a very, very large saving in terms of saving there, thanks to compression. But I just wanted to give you an update on that, just to give you some idea about how this happens in real time. If we go to the compression tab and we look at the statistics there over time, Obviously, the graph we've set to just one day, so the difference is going to be quite monumental, um, but likely could be seen tomorrow, and that's when we'll come back to it to see what the difference will be. But we can already see that the compression sizes are happening and taking place there in the background in real time. In the storage pool, we can see more information about um, all the different apps and versions and stuff that's installed on there. And a lot of that deduplication and compression can be seen and utilized there with the apps that are being uh, housed on the NAS and being actioned from it. So what's gonna be really interesting to see here 
is obviously the compression is going to make a vast amount of difference. But deduplication is largely unwarranted here in what we're doing. In our next test in the next video, we're going to be looking more into deduplication from multiple sources. But for now, let's leave the test running and see what happens to our final result once this hits the 100% completion mark. Right, so the task has completed. I'll be honest, I went away and did other things, but I have come back to the screen here. And if we select all of these folders, we're able to see that the composite amount of data inside, if we go down to the bottom and I go to the calculator, should be around two and a half terabytes. So we'll let that finish. 2.68 terabytes, which makes sense given that each one of those folders was around 270, give or take, uh, gigabytes inside each of them inside. So again, 10 copies of that, if you work out terabytes to gigabyte ratio, that's about right there. So that's all inside there, so it's letting us know. However, if we make our way into the storage manager here, we can see once again public folder, go into more details. We're able to see the extent to which that inline compression has taken effect. So if we go into the full remit of data there, let's full screen that there, let it finish its analysis. We're able to see that that 2.67 terabytes of data has been compressed down to 2.19 terabytes. That is just shy of 500 gigabytes saved. That's half a terabyte of saving. That's pretty substantial. Now, here we have the original results from earlier. This is before we did the test. So you can see the compression that has happened there. And as you can see, um, both compression and deduplication have made their mark. There's the, plex fold, uh, the public folder there. And we can see that the original size that was in there is hugely compressed after adding all of that extra data there. And we can see that compression has definitely improve things quite substantially on that storage board. Compression has certainly saved us a huge amount of uh, space. Now, bear in mind that the tests that we have conducted here are supposed to be very bread and butter. They're supposed to be meat and potato. They're meant to be as clear as anything. Normally though, the benefits of compression in line and of course deduplication happen in the background. They're gonna happen with your backups, whether it be on your OS or on other devices. Those common files coming from multiple different sources and today's test is more about showing you direct effects of both the caching helping that read-write action happening in the background, but of course, far more centered on the idea of the compression anti-duplication savings of a ZFS system like QUTS Hero. Now, we are going to be doing far more extensive deduplication tests there in the background, um, and I will hopefully have that video out for you within the next few weeks. It's quite a complex feat setting up a bunch of systems that are going to be using the QDedupe and deduplication uh, advantages of the ZFS file system. And I'm looking forward to showing you guys that in more detail. Um, but this has been my uh, demonstration of inline compression and a little bit of deduplication there in the background um, for you guys on the brand new H973AX. Uh, there's going to be more information on this and of course comparing against some of the other contenders um, within this price bracket. I look forward to talking about them soon. But thank you so much for watching. Click like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to both NAS Compares and of course Span.com, the NAS experts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.